everyone, this is Jana Smakula, member of Spellbinder's design team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create beautiful dimensional flowers using Spellbinder's Stack and Fan Flower set. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the dies inside the set. There are large, medium, and small petals for your flowers. Each size has a scalloped and a plain petal and can be used on its own or together to create an additional interest. You also have your large and small leaves, two of each size, and they are mirrored to provide you with more options. These particular leaves also remind me of wings. Since there are two of each and since they're mirrored, I think it'd be fun to use them as wings on some projects. Now let's go back to our petals. I want to show you the difference between a plain and a scalloped petal when used on the flower. So these flowers were created using the largest petals. This one was done using a plain petal die, and this one was made using a scalloped petal die. I also have a flower created using a medium plain petal just to show you the difference in size or diameter of these. And here is one more flower done using a small plain petal die. In today's video I'm going to show you how to make a small and medium flowers and I will also share some tips and tricks on how you can combine plain and scalloped petals on one flower. Now what you can also do is make slightly different flowers using these same petals. Here I have a small flower created using medium sized petals. I made this one simply by arranging petals in a different manner and I will show you how to make this flower at the end of this video so be sure to stick around. You will need to use some sort of a fastener like a brad to make these flowers and secure the petals in place. You can also use thread and I will show you how to later on during this video. So let's start making our flower. I'm going to be making mine using patterns paper and I have two pieces here. I will be cutting two petals at once to save myself some time. Now this is a rather thin paper so it's okay to cut two sheets. I wouldn't recommend cutting two sheets of cardstock though. To make it easier to cut these, I'm going to staple them so that they stay together. You don't have to do this, it's simply something I like to do when I'm cutting a few sheets of paper at once. I'm going to be using a small and medium scalloped petals for my flowers, and I'm going to cut these out of patterned paper. You will need to create about 8 to 10 petals for your flowers. It takes less petals to make larger flowers, and also less petals if you're using scalloped dies. I've used anywhere from 7 to 10 petals for my flowers and I was very happy with the results. So go ahead and cut your petals, be sure to emboss them for some added dimension and detail and set them aside. Now you can use scalloped petals on their own and you can use plain petals on their own, but you can also combine both on one flower by placing a plain petal on top of the scalloped one. I'm going to use this beautiful vellum with gold printing on it to die cut my plain petals. Again, I'm going to cut 7 for my flower today. You can also emboss these if you like. I decided not to emboss these particular ones. Now while we have our machine out and our dies out, let's create some leaves and we can then start assembling our flower. Because I already have a little bit of gold there on my vellum petals, I'm going to use gold mirror cardstock to die cut my leaves. I'm cutting two small leaves and one large leaf for my card. Okay, so let's start putting our flowers together. I'm going to begin with a small flower and I'm going to use my scalloped petals for this one. So go ahead and stack your petals all together and thread them all together onto a brad facing up. You can also thread them one by one if you find it easier. Next, flip your petals over and start with the most bottom one. Curl it over and secure the open hole onto the brad. So again, curl it over and secure the open hole onto the brad. Keep doing this, always pulling the most bottom die cut petal until all petals are curled over and secured onto the brad. Slay the brad to secure our petals in place and finish making our flower. You can see I've used 7 petals for this, you can choose to use 8 or more if you like. Now let's create one more flower and combine plain and scalloped petals. Just like we did the first time, thread your petals one by one onto your brad. Begin with a plain vellum one and add the scalloped one next. Again, begin with a plain vellum one and add a scalloped one after that. Or stack plain vellum petal onto a scalloped pattern paper one and thread both at once. Keep doing this until you have all of your petals on your brad. Now you might notice that with the amount of layers here, our flower has become quite dimensional and it no longer fits comfortably on our brad. In cases like this, I like to use a needle and thread instead of a brad. So just as you would with a brad, thread your petals all together onto your string. 
Once you have them in place, you can either flip your petals over and start with the most bottom one, or keep as is and start with the most top one. You will end up starting with the exact same petal either way. Bring your needle to the open hole from the back of your petal and pull both paper and vellum petals in place. It looks more complicated than it is, but once you give it a try, you're going to love making these flowers. Let me show you this one more time. So start with the most top petal, bring your needle to the open hole from the back of your petal, and pull both paper and vellum petals in place. Simple. Now the key here is to always use the most top or the most bottom petal, depending on whether your flower is facing up or down. Once you have all of your petals formed into a flower, go ahead and secure the thread in place by tying it into a knot and a bow and adding some glue to be sure. It is easier to use a brad to put these flowers together, but when I have more layers, I find that brads don't always work, so I use string. I'm going to use these flowers on a simple card and I'm going to attach both in place by using liquid glue and also add my gold die cut leaves to finish making my card. You can use these flowers not only on cards, you can put them on gifts, home decor, and more. Now, as promised, I wanted to show you one more way you can put these flowers together. So we were folding our petals like so. If you fold them in a different manner, you can have a petal of a different shape. Add two more petals and you have another beautiful flower. I hope this video has inspired you to try using Spellbinder's stack and fan flowers on your projects. If you have any questions about these flowers, please leave them in the comment section below. And be sure to subscribe to Spellbinder's YouTube channel for more education and inspiration. Thanks for watching! I'll see you next time! Bye!